Right. <clears throat> Swing arms back on. Um, as I say, brush painted black. Um, and what I've done is I've bolted this side of the axle back on. It, it's not tight because I, I want to be able to move it when I'm putting the other half on. But basically, on the other side of where your <coughs> where your belt goes on on the pulley, it it's pretty much the same as as the other half, just a spline shaft that comes out of that end. But uh, in here where the bearing runs, this as you know on the outside, there's a, a grease nipple on the outside of the axle. Grab my, my grease gun. Um, now I've, I've packed, packed the bearings with grease and then when, when it's all together, I hope you'll be able to see this, there should be some grease. Oh, turn the grease gun around, I think I've got a kink in there. There you can see the grease coming through there. So from the outside, you can uh, you can grease up your uh, your bearings on sort of so they never go dry. But it, it's these things come with the tiniest amount of grease in them to start with. It uh, a bit of a spread about. Um, so yeah, it, I've packed the uh, the bearings on the on the centre bit, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but also, right, this is the the pulley belt pulley, and that that's your bearing, obviously nicely packed out. That sh this this side goes in in that way. What you've got in here is your basically your planet gears. Um, that allows the diff to work, sort of thing. It, in a sense, it's it's pretty much the same as a car. As in, if you imagine on a car, you hear you'll hear people say, "Oh, the crown wheel and pinion in the diff." So, in a sense, your pulley is the crown wheel, and your belt is what would be the pinion. Because the belt's driving the pulley to turn it. Well, on a car, you've got your pinion shaft comes through and turns the crown wheel, and hence drives your wheels. So it's quite a straightforwardish setup. But there's also a grease nipple on this, which I've I've also packed grease into there into there as well, so that it's got plenty of grease in it. And putting it together, it's just so straightforward, it just shoves on. So we get it, look at this friggin' belt out there, I've just got my fingers stuck. So put just push it on the shaft and then turn it until until the shaft sort of uh break line on the wrong side of the belt. Yeah, till the shaft uh Sorry, till the splines on the shaft line up with the splines in there, and then it just pushes on. And it's a lot smoother as well just doing that than what it was before. So, as you can see on this side, I've packed this bearing out as well, and I'm using uh, like a high performance, a high high performance, high temperature grease. So it's it's good stuff. Now, obviously once you get your, your, to this stage, you want to make sure that you've got your belt in. Because if you haven't, it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass putting it together. Also, I'm going to shove that forward. Just so it stays in, in the openings. Shove it right to that side so it stays on. So what I need to do, 
Let's give it so that the teeth are sitting down in the in the pulley. <coughs> so the next step with this, once you've got your well this far, is uh, you want to be putting the other half of the diff in. Um, and if I remember rightly, I think when I put this together the first time. I pointed out that you've got to have your adjuster plate bolted to the to the actual axle um, because you can't sort of fit it on like that. It, you've got to have it so it just butts up against this plate and slides in. So I think if I just move you slightly, I think you should be able to see the gist of this. Right. Now I've also cleaned out the inside of this ready to to pump in new grease etc. Just turn the shaft until it that's it. And before I uh, Try and put any bolts in the two halves to bolt the two halves together. I'll just put a, one of the bolts in here. So, what you've got is your two halves are near enough together. Um, in fact, they are together at that. Might be even be able to get a a screw in if it will line up. I'm just nipping them up at the minute, I'm not going to fully tighten them. Put one in the front. To start with, just for now, I'll probably just put four, four of these in. One, in, one here, one at the, like here, one in the top and one in the bottom line, just for now. Oh, that's the thing. I should have been a bit more selective with where I put them. Because a couple of the screws came out and they didn't have uh, washers on. So what I'll do, that one has got washer. Well, hasn't got a washer in it, sorry. So I'll just screw that one in just to keep it lined up. And then I'll grab a torch which is over here. And see if I can see. Right, that one, that one the wash is still in it, that one isn't, and I've got a sneaking suspicion there might be two washers on that one. That's only got one washer in it, and if I'm not mistaken, there was only the two. So, screw that one back out. Yeah, it's the two at that at the front side that have still got the the washers stuck in. So put a screw in that hasn't got a washer on it. They really are <coughs> quite simple to put together these things. I don't know if you can see yeah you can. This uh you can see there's no hubs 
or anything on at the minute. Um, these are the brackets that are welded onto hold the mud guards. That blocks behind there. I'll show you this lot better as we go on, but just for now, same up to the side. I've give it a, just give a light lick of paint. I've, I've left it till I get it set up 100% properly and everything's tightened up. I've still got these bits that stick out that the axle slides on. I've still got them to paint, but I'll get it all set first and then just paint it. And it's a temporary paint job um, because it'll be the whole bike's getting painted eventually. So like tank front mud guard, this fender off the middle, the two mud guards, all this lot will just get painted properly, but just not yet. So really easy to get at. Um, sorry, really easy to work on. Um, they're quite a basic setup in, inside, as you saw. You just the pulley just lifts off. Well, but you split the half. The pulley just lifts off. The only thing I will say, if anybody's who's watching this video, if the, if you're building a trike and you're using the DNA kit, make sure that you definitely grease up your bearings because yes, they've got a very small amount of grease on them just so they're not dry, but they're not packed. Um, and I pumped quite a lot of grease into where the the sort of the diff bit works on the inside. Um, so that basically they come and dry-ish. So make sure you pack your bearings when you know on final assembly because this isn't going to come apart again now. Make sure you pack your bearings with grease and then once it is all together rotate it even by hand just on the disc or whatever and pump some more grease in through these grease nipples, there's one on each side um, just to make sure that they're greased up obviously it just makes it last a little bit longer so, so the next thing I need to be doing is I get get the rest of me mounting bolts in um, line it all up I mean it's not too far away for being centre wise but it's it's sitting cock this end sitting down so I'll use a clamp to pull that up level on this side like on it like clamp these top and bottom pull it up level and then bolt that up make sure that's level and bolt that up obviously make sure it's in line like like when I first put it together uh, and that should be it and then I can put my mounting screws in push it back get the correct tension on the belt and uh, then we can start sort of putting more bits and pieces on it obviously put the rest of these screws in that go around the middle um, and then I'll put all, all the brake lines back on but when I'm doing the brake lines this time I'll tighten them up properly um, because once the calipers go back on well once I've got it all back together properly it, I'll be bleeding the brakes up then I'll be setting the handbrake properly etc etc so yeah for now that's it on the on the axle for you lot and um, what I'll do is as I say I'll just get it all bolted up and lined up um, when I've come to adjust it I'll, I'll bring you back and we'll adjust it out until we get the correct tension on the belt uh, and I'll put the rest of them in as well, round the the edge of the the diff sort of thing, the centre bit. Right, knock you off for now. Come back soon. Right, that's the uh, the axle sort of back on and slightly adjusted. Well, say slightly adjusted. It's not far away. Belt tensions sort of near enough. What I wanted to show is just as you see there, that bit there, that's the block I was on about that I was welding. Um, that bit there is for the mud guards to bolt onto. But as you can see there, I've left this in loose on purpose. 
if I screw it out, you can see the hole in the block so that when you tighten the screw in, the screw goes into that and it can't slip off anywhere. Now I've still got the, the axle to adjust. Um, I'm just messing about at the minute with it uh, to get it so it's equal and not not like further up on one side than the other. Um, these are still loose. I haven't tightened them up. I mean the the nipped up, so to speak, but enough that it can move. Um, so they're to tighten up. So once I get this belt tension correct and these fully tightened up. There's a couple of bits and pieces to touch up, like you can see there where it needs touched up. As I say, it's just a temporary brush painted job this. So I'll quickly go over, touch everything up, and as I say, once these bits are tight, I'm going to paint these bits so that they're black as well. Now I purposely left them and didn't paint them because I don't want I don't want them painted where they're inside these bits. Um so yeah, I'll do that. Uh, I just thought I'd show you these blocks, the adjusters. So I'll get this lot all squared up properly. Um, and the tension on the belt, everything nipped up tight, properly how it's meant to be. Um, yes, there's a, a bracket there, which I don't know how well you could see that on an earlier video, but that's one of the ones that holds the handbrake. There's a clamp bolts to that, to that for the handbrake cable. Same up to the side. So, what I'm going to do is get all the brake line fitted back up, but this time the brake line's getting proper tightened up so that the next step, once I've got all uh, the brackets and the hub and everything back on, I'll bleed the brakes up and then obviously check for leaks. There shouldn't be any, but you know, there shouldn't be wars, there shouldn't be disease, but there fucking is. So, I'll check for leaks, hopefully there won't be any. Um, and then we'll get cracked on. I'll come back then and and we'll get cracked on with the next bit sort of thing. So, great. Catch you soon. Right. A bit of an update here from the last clip. I've got, uh, obviously you can see everything's <coughs> bolted back on. Brake lines are back on, everything's tight. Um, all the brake lines are tightened up properly in all the joints and bled the brakes up. Um, and basically, these four pot calipers <coughs> I was expecting to not work because when you think about it, you've got a four pot caliper there, four pot caliper on the other side. Standard three quarter inch master cylinder that runs normally a four pot caliper on its own. So I wasn't having, I wasn't holding out high hopes for these calipers working. But I was surprised, I'm going to use a spirit level here to push the brake pedal while I turn the disc. That's me starting to push the pedal, and that's it locked. Well, I can't can't move that at all, but what you can't see off camera, um, the level, just as that locks up so I can't move it with my hand, if it was on its wheels this, you might be able to push it and turn the wheels, but my brake pedal is full travel, I, I can't push the brake pedal any further, and it's not because it's locked up, it's just that's the full play on the pedal. Now that's it's quite a lot of travel on the uh, brake pedal. I've sat on it like just sat on the bike as if it you know I know there's a seat meant to go on there etc but <clears throat> you have to lift your foot right up in the air and basically I'm nearly straightening my leg out to push the brake lever all the way forward to lock that up. So Choices were a bigger master cylinder, but then you've got the issues of getting one that actually fits the front and looks still looks good, 
or I changed my calipers. So I toyed with the idea of going for the uh, the DNA two pot calipers, um, which is to be truthful, originally when I bought this kit, the pictures on the uh, advert showed this axle kit with the two pot calipers, not the four pots. Um, anyways, what I've done is I've bought a set of Willwood two pot calipers. Um, now I've got all the measurements and stuff for the for the calipers and I am going to have to make another mounting bracket because the, the mounting centres are different on the new calipers. But I'm not bothered about that. A little bit of work to have brakes that work properly is worth it. Um, but, as I say, these, these calipers, the, the piston sizes in these calipers they're either the same size or slightly bigger than the standard Harley Davidson caliper pistons. So instead of the standard master cylinder trying to push out four, four pistons, you've got the standard master cylinder trying to push out eight pistons that are either the same size or slightly bigger. My brain told me straight away that it won't work. I was surprised, to be fair, that it actually locked the wood, locked the disc up. But as I say, when it does lock the disc, you nearly get full travel on your pedal. Um, the new calipers I've bought, the Willwood ones, they're uh, oh now then, my brain switched off. I can't convert this. Just let me have a look on here. For a second, just bear with me on this. Just going to get a conversion up. Um, inches to millimeters. Right, so get rid of that. And go for basically the piston diameter on the new calipers is basically 28 and a half mil. So in total, I'll have four pistons that are 28 and a half mil. And I think, do you know, off top of my head, my brain is just switched off tonight. Off top of my head, I'm sure it's something like. 30 mil, 31 mil or something, I think, standard Harley pistons in the calipers. So it's actually 1.12 inch each one, which when converted it comes out at 28.448, so it's near enough 28.5 mil. So it'll give me a lot, a lot harder pedal because it'll work like the Harley brakes meant to work. And uh, they are good calipers. Willwood. I've used Willwood calipers before on bikes and cars, um, and they are good calipers. Um, so anybody who's got who's building a, one of these DNA conversions, if if you've got the four pot calipers that come with some of the axle kits, um, your options. Are you either fit a bigger non standard front master cylinder that can handle eight big pistons in you know two four pot calipers, sort of thing, or you can change and go to a different caliper, which is what I've done. So, but I just thought I'd let you know as I've checked all this as well by the way um, all the fittings there wasn't a single leak anywhere which is which is good I was hoping there wouldn't be a leak and so I wasn't expecting one but you never know um, so yeah for now <coughs> all I'm gonna do 
is I'm, I'm going to cut these uh, mud guards to the right length, front and back, um, and shape them. I'm not going to. I'll show you the end results when I come to it. Um, but break wise for now, until my new calipers turn up, um, I can't do a lot more with this. Because as I say, all this hub and everything is going to have to come back off so I can take this mounting plate off and make a new mounting plate to mount the new Willwood calipers. So, yeah, until then, that's pretty much it. So, I'll leave it at that for now and I'll, uh, I'll be back soon.